I remember one time I needed some bread. Like I had a little apartment and my rent was like 500 a month because it was like a little four plex, a little garage, little apartment. I'm a rapper and everything, but you know, it is what it is. But it was mine. So got caught up in the music. Like I say, it probably was some shit where I had to go out of town and be gone and stay gone and you know, don't get no bread. So I just made it back and I was like, yeah, boo, I need some bread, you know? And, uh, you born in it and you know things like that so whatever you could do to help help don't crash don't you know don't don't make an opportunity and blow it like take that opportunity and grow it you know push something that way push something that way do something so you know you can break the cycle just in case if it go bad for you you know it's still there why you think did he going through what he went through? He had all those big artists and none of their families or nothing got shit. You know, it's like, man, you, you're going to have to pay for that in the end. You got to pay for that. You know, you, you, because it ain't nothing but money. Why you got people suffering? Why? And your money just sitting there. Big head, man, bro. Like, but not the, I ain't trying to be messy or negative, but ain't that pretty much what you're saying when it comes to somebody like, like a boosie or somebody, man, like people who got paper, but you said, or you said even TVG, but they don't want to pay you, though. Right. So you don't feel like... See, no, see, it's what's understood don't need to be explained. Oh, for sure. Well, you ain't got see, to see, 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 see the rest of it? Be street shit and be hood shit. See, I, I, can't, I can't persecute a nigga because he don't want to give me none of his money. I might know him outside of that. Like I said, it ain't all about money. If I looked at it for all about money, then that means I ain't shit. You feel what I'm saying? So I got to keep my principles and morals and all that intact. So I'm moving like that. So if, 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 if this nigga got money, like I say, and I'm going to say this. If your friend got it and you ain't got it, that ain't your friend. So... Respect the code, the policy, playing your position. All that ain't got nothing to do with being real. You just doing what you supposed to do. That don't mean no another nigga gonna do ain't what you do. Yeah, you can't expect for them right. to do what you would do if you was in that position. Right. So if you fuck with them, you fuck with them. You don't, you don't. Regardless. You know, you. but that don't mean don't ask them. That, that don't mean don't ask them. So I still ask if I, you know, push come to show, I still ask him like, you know, who, it don't matter who it is. Because I know if the shoe was on the other foot, or I know that what I do, and then like I said, it ain't all about money. Sometimes it be about what you can say, well, how you can help somebody else, family member, anything, you know? So it be like, shit, like I be due for, it just be my due diligence. I don't be out of line. You feel what I'm saying? I ain't gonna go to no nigga who I done said fuck or anything like that for anything because I'm gonna understand that, you know, that even if, if I was just talking, it comes with, you know, the, the, it comes with the territory. So I'm like, I ain't, you know, I don't do too much of that. But I, you know, niggas, the niggas I reach out to, I reach out to them because I can. I don't reach out to them because I want to. You know, I reach out to them because I can and, you know, like, it don't, I don't know what may happen or how it may happen and I don't take it personal oh, because sure. I remember one time I needed some bread, like, I had a little apartment and my rent was like 500 a month because it was like a little fourplex, a little garage, little apartment, I'm a rapper and everything, but you know, it is what it is, but it was mine, so... Got caught up in the music. Like I say, it probably was some shit where I had to go out of town and be gone and stay gone and, you know, don't get no bread. So I just made it back and I was like, yeah, boo, I need some bread, you know. And uh, he was like, shit, man, I'm going to keep it real, but it ain't going to be going like that. And I was like, shit, I get it, but, 
You know, I understood he wasn't the CEO. You know, like he didn't, you know, the same nigga told him what he told him, told me what he told me. And he, he looked at it like, shit, I made what I made, how I made it. So, you know, and like I say, shit, whatever I make out this situation, got something to do with him. Oh, sure. I feel like every interview, every song, every something, not songs, because some of them people just don't even know about that. They just get on the internet and hear it and see what's going on and like it, and that's good. But a lot of it I owe to Boosie, you hear me? Some to Webby, but a lot to Boosie. Oh, so for sure. That, that I, I have to, you know, like that just come with being honorable and real, you know, like in the streets. I owe a lot to Lee Lucas because he didn't have to do a whole, whole, whole lot. It's just that when he did it and how he did it and he did it from the kindness of his heart or the realness of his character. He didn't have picks. Like, you know, like when you got fly shit and you a fly nigga, you don't need no, you know, no off brand nigga with you. But you choose to pick niggas like me up. And, you know, ride me around and, you know, take me to the gambling shack and let me meet all the other legends from other hoods and shit like that. And, you know, so, you know, that and that shit meant something because, like, I was walking and niggas was respecting me. Niggas was driving, respecting me, and I was walking. You know, like, I go to the club, 16, get in, you know, all the other niggas. They still got years and years before they could go to the club, you know. And it's just all because, like, when I was 11 and 12, I was on the scene. You know, like, I'm, I'm with a nigga, I'm in a drug house, or I'm riding with killers, or, you know, whatever, whatever, because it wasn't nothing else to do. So it's like, shit, that nigga made a name like that. And it was like, wasn't no Detroit attached to making that name because nobody knew me at all. So once I made a name for myself, a motherfucker started hating and shit like that. That's when they threw the Detroit back out there. At first, it was a special. So they tried to wipe it off. Oh, that nigga from the poor side of South Baton Rouge. That nigga from Big D. That nigga ain't from no fucking Detroit. Because Detroit sound great. You know, down there when you got the Lions, the Tigers, you know, the Pistons, the Red Wings. You got... The Wolverine, you got all this other wonderful stuff going on. So Detroit sound great down there. So they was like, okay, the great part, uh-uh. Uh-uh, you from South Baton Rouge. But then once the talent and all that start coming out, oh, that nigga from Detroit. The, the reason to side with another nigga, oh, that nigga from Detroit. When you ain't got nothing else to say when all your lies don't work, oh, that nigga from Detroit. So I'm like, shit, here I am. Motor City Pretty.